Paleontology, the study of fossils, is one of the few fields where discoveries can come from experts and amateurs alike. Ali Rogan is back with a story of some recent astonishing fossil finds. From the rugged coastline of Northeast England, I don't know if what I was looking at was actually what I was thinking I was looking at. To the sandy beaches of the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland, fossil hunting is a hobby for young and old. At first, it was a little bit farther away, and I thought it was like a big rock, and I went closer, and I saw that it was a big megalon tooth. On Christmas morning, nine-year-old Molly Sampson put one of her new presents to good use, a pair of waders perfect to help in the hunt for an ancient shark tooth. I tried to scoop it up with my scooper, but it was, the tooth was too big, and then I just reached in and pulled it out of the water. I think the, it, the wind chill was 10 degrees, and uh, yeah, she just dove her hands right in the water and scooped it out. <laughs> my hand was freezing after that for like most of the time. I bet. Fossil hunting runs in this family. Bruce Sampson got his kids hooked from a young age. It's so cool to see the enthusiasm and to see them get so excited about something that they find. And uh, one of the things I always tell the kids when they find something is that if you think about it, it's pretty cool to, to think about something that's 15 million years old, that's been sitting out there for, for all that time, and you're the first person to ever pick it up and hold it. The Sampsons took their find to Stephen Godfrey, the curator of paleontology at the Calvert Marine Museum. He said it was a, a very good specimen in good condition. and Oh, and he said that it's about 15 million years old. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So every inch of tooth equals 10 feet of like a shark. And it's five inches. So it would have been a 50 foot shark. He said it was a find of a lifetime. I've told her and I tell people repeatedly, look, you shouldn't expect to come to Calvert Cliffs and find a fossil like that because there are people who have spent a lifetime and have not found a large tooth like that. So she just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Millions of years ago in the Miocene era, this area was underwater. Time and erosion have left fossils behind for paleontologists and amateur fossil hunters like the Sampsons to discover. You would think that after 200 years of uh, kind of Western culture collecting fossils from along Calvert Cliffs that we would know everything that there is to know about both the geology and the diversity of organisms that lived here during the Miocene epoch. Um, but in fact, we don't. And every year we continue to make new discoveries. Across the Atlantic Ocean, Marie Woods made one of those new discoveries when she found a fossilized dinosaur footprint along the Yorkshire coast. Once I got up close and personal with it to kind of realize what it was, um, I wasn't necessarily aware of what type of dinosaur it was or or indeed the, the importance of it, you know, the scientific importance of it. Um, but I knew enough to kind of start the next stages of, of processing it. Woods is an archaeologist who studies the medieval period, downright modernity when compared to the age of the dinosaurs. I find it hilarious, you know, that I, I look at things from about 800 years ago and, and here's this footprint from 165 million years ago. Woods is one of the co-authors of a recently published study that confirmed the footprint was from a giant theropod, a dinosaur group that includes the T-Rex. Even better, the print revealed a new dinosaur behavior, squatting. What they've said is quite significant about this particular print is the fact that it's the only one of its kind in the world that shows a behavior of a dinosaur of this kind actually taking a rest. I love that idea of it helping tell the story of the fact that these theropods could take rests and just maybe sit and admire the coast. Exactly, sit and relax on a sunny Scarborough day. To protect the footprint from the elements, fossil collectors carefully removed it from the rocky cliff. That's when they realized another fossil hunter, Rob Taylor, had spotted the same print, just not fully exposed, a few months earlier. Woods and Taylor share in the historic find. And though paleontology has been a field dominated by men, Woods hopes her discovery will help change that. It's fantastic, especially f for myself, to um, encourage more young women and, of course, like um, school children to, to get involved in, in the science-based uh, subject. And Molly Sampson's find is proof that neither gender nor age matters when it comes to contributing to science. Paleontology is one of the disciplines of science where the avocational community with whom we collaborate regularly can make a significant contribution. And so just like Molly getting out and looking for fossils, there's a, a large, relatively large population of collectors who are very passionate 
and know a lot about the geology and paleontology who collect fossils and bring them to our attention. So tell me about what it takes to be a good fossil hunter. It's not always easy to find stuff, right? Sometimes you got to be patient and go out a lot and, and keep exploring and, and investigating different things, right? Yeah, like if you see the rocks, like you might not see them on top, but like before you uh, start digging, you look on top and then you can like scrape the rocks and see if there's anything under them. Patience, a good eye, and a lot of curiosity. For PBS News Weekend, I'm Allie Rogan. 